Hey there, it's Simon Hurley from Inclipse, and welcome to another video. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Now today's video, I'm gonna be showing how to create two different cards with the different watercolor backgrounds in today's video, and I'm using the Aquaflow markers. These things are super awesome. They're like a barrel filled with liquid watercolor that is super concentrated with a real kind of paintbrush at the end. So you'll see right here, hopefully you guys can tell, this is like a real paintbrush and lots of color comes out and you get super concentrated and fun watercolor backgrounds. So without further ado, I'm gonna show how to use these to create some watercolor backgrounds in today's video. Let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with this first colorful background here. This one almost reminds me of like a tie-dye kind of pattern. So I'm going to start off with some frog tape. This stuff is really awesome because it's got edges on it that's kind of coated, so it seals your cardstock, so none of it should seep underneath. I have a thicker and thinner frog tape, and I use this stuff to kind of mask off my watercolor paper, and it's also a good low-tack tape, so it's not gonna rip your paper either. I'm gonna tape that on the top and bottom to kind of mask off those areas because I want a little stripe with white edges on it for today's card. Now you could totally mask off the rest of the card base and stamp all along that with the sentiment, but I decided later on that the craft card stock was a little bit better. So I'm going to spray this down with some water here to make sure that it's super nice and wet. And this will help all those colors move and kind of blend together. So I'll start off with this light orange kind of yellow color, and I'm going to add this in a couple places on the card. Now to get out lots of vibrant color at once, it does disperse quite a bit of color, but since I'm doing a whole background here, you wanna squeeze the pen a little bit. Now don't overdo it or it could like break the pen, but you just wanna squeeze a little bit and then more ink will come out and you'll get lots more pigment on the paper. Now you can see I squeezed a little bit too much on this kind of pinkish color here, so it got a little bit dark in that one area, and all I did was just take my finger and spread out that color a little bit more. Don't be afraid to add more or less water or spray it a little bit more if you want to kind of brighten up those colors a little bit. I like to keep them fairly concentrated though because then these backgrounds turn out super bright, and that's really the look I was going for for today's video. But you could definitely tone them down and make more pastel backgrounds by kind of taking more water and toning down the colors a little bit. Then I'll finish it off with a little bit of blue color in here. And I was really going in with lots of different colors, but you could stick to a theme. I really just like all these mixed together. And then I'm gonna go in for another spray here to kind of help them blend even more. Now once I'm done with all that, I'm going to heat set this using my heat tool until it's really nice and dry. Now I forgot to mention, today I'm actually working on Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. I like watercolor cardstock, I find that it takes these a little bit better than just a regular cardstock would. So now that the background is done, you could totally leave it there and peel it up, but I'm using one of these kind of Moroccan looking stencils from Tonic Studios, and this is one of those strip stencils. So it just covers a little area of the card, and today I'm going to take that, tape it down, and then I'm going to spray a water layer over top of it. Now since these are water reactive still, it's going to reactivate that color that's underneath and kind of lift off some of that color. So I'm bringing in my rag here, I've given it a couple seconds to kind of seep into the actual color there, and then I'm going to go in and lift that color off. You can see it kind of lightened up in those certain areas, and then I'm going to go back in with one more layer of water and do it again for an even lighter effect. Now you could continue this and keep lifting off more and more colors, but I thought two layers would be good and provide enough contrast for that background. So once I'm done blotting that off, I'm going to lift that up and you can see that really fun Moroccan kind of pattern in there now, um, which lifts off that watercolor really nicely, I think. And then I'll peel off my frog tape. Now this is a really delicate tape, it's non, uh, not super sticky. So when I peel it, I still wanna make sure that I peel it back onto itself like this and peel it up nice and slowly. And that'll make sure that my background doesn't really rip and it'll kind of put as much caution there from it to rip as possible. And you can see that the tape does really well with sealing the edges too. You try to make sure before you get started you press the edges down really well and it won't really seep underneath them. Now I'm using this Brutus Monroe Monster Stamp Set. I love this and I was looking for the perfect card and this one seemed to be it. It was just super bright so I couldn't resist these fun little monsters. So I'm stamping down this one little monster here in Nouveau Hybrid Black ink and I'll stamp it twice just in case I make a mistake with my coloring and want to restart it. 
So I'm gonna color this in using the Aquaflow markers as well. And I'm just going in with this super bright yellow color and I'm going to fill in the whole monster there. Just coloring in the whole thing. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go in with some orange and kind of add some depth and dimension to this. Now, like I said, lots of color comes out at once, so it can be a little bit hard to control for smaller areas like this. And I thought that I had a little bit too much ink on it, so I actually went in with a paper towel and just blotted up a little bit of color. And there was still enough dimension there um, and shading from when I had added that orange color on. So now I added this red down, and I'm going to kind of blend that out into its spots using this um, glitter Aquaflow marker. And I love this for just adding a little bit of glitter uh, to any little critters or anything like that. And once that coloring is all done, I'm going to adhere everything together. So I popped everything up on some foam tape. And then I'm stamping down the sentiment that says, Rawr, that's monster for I love you. And I think that's just an awesome sentiment for this. I kept it super simple, and I love how that looks on top of the craft card stock. I wanted this to be kind of a more masculine, kid-friendly card. I didn't want to add any sequins or anything like that. So I kept it really nice and plain and simple. And I really love how that watercolor background turned out. Now for this next card, again, I'm keeping it really simple, but I'm creating a really fun watercolor galaxy background. Um, now I did this whole thing with taking that frog tape and cutting out a circle and putting a couple pieces together to mask everything off so that I could do a one layer card. But in the end, it didn't end up working out. Long story short, the um, kind of seams in each piece of tape, um, I didn't push it down hard enough and it kind of all seeped underneath the frog tape. So you want to make sure you seal the edges and really press down and maybe not use, you know, so many pieces of tape layered together like this. I don't think that was a great idea. So I'm going to tape, uh, I'm going to tape that down to my surface again. And then I'm taking some water, just regular water, and I'm laying that down. You want lots of water to help these colors blend. And I'm going to do a pretty similar thing to what I did in the first card. I'm adding lots of color down here. So I'll start off with that orange and then the blue color. And again, they're kind of mixing and blending here to create a nice green. And I'm going to keep doing this with some of the bright colors. So I'll add a little bit of red into here as well. And I think I also added a little bit of green as well. Just adding some really bright colors to the bottom of this. And these will kind of peek through that galaxy background once the whole thing is nice and finished. So adding this base layer down of really bright colors is going to kind of really help later on in the surface to or in the background to make sure your background, your galaxy has lots of bright colors in it later on. So I'm going to heat set this to dry it down, and I always use my heat tool, but you could definitely set it off to the side to dry if you want to, too. It'll just take a little bit longer. So now, as I'm drying this, I'm going to go in with my rag here, and I'm just going to lift off any mud kind of puddles of color that I don't really want, and that'll help make the background look a little bit better, those puddles of color you don't really want in there. So after I've done all that, I'm going in with this black Aquaflow marker and I'm going to color in a little bit and then use my water spritzer to kind of spray that background out. Now this is when the background starts looking like a hot mess and I know you all are questioning how this is going to look like a galaxy. I definitely was even questioning that as I was creating this. But I think most galaxy backgrounds kind of have to go through that stage of looking like a hot mess before anything really comes together. So I'm going to throw a little bit of that purple color down there too. I'm mainly just going in with some really dark kind of galaxy sky colors um, and kind of putting it over top of this to darken that background a little bit. Covering it with color will definitely help it in the end to look more like a galaxy. You want it to be kind of random um, with darker colors on top and then have some of those brighter colors peek through. I'm blotting some of that dark color up to reveal some of that lighter color and I'll even throw back in some more of that orange as well. You can see I've sprayed down this background too to kind of keep that water moving and to keep everything nice and blended here. Now to finish this off, I'm going around the edges with a black Aquaflow again just to add a little bit more of the dark color around those edges. And then I'm going to spray it one more time to help it blend together like this. So I'm taking my heat tool one last time to dry this all up. And again, it kind of looks like a hot mess right now. You're probably really questioning how it's going to look like a galaxy. So I'm peeling off this frog tape, and again, it really did seep underneath the edges. You could totally leave it like this. I think that looks cool too, but I was going for more of a clean and simple look in this card. So I decided later on to die cut it out with just a regular circle. And I'm a little bit off frame for this, but I went into my Kira Take Gante Tambi watercolors, and I'm taking that white watercolor and really taking tons of it. 
and kind of barely even watering it down to make sure it's nice and opaque. And I'm gonna go in here and just flick that on with my water brush. Now this creates the look of stars and this is when it kind of starts to all look a little bit more like a galaxy. The way you flick it kind of depends on the type of stars you're creating. So if you want kind of bigger splatters, you can press it a little bit harder and go closer. And if you want finer splatters, you can go up from more of a distance. So you kind of want to play around with that to see the different types of splatters you can get. So once that's all dry, I'm going in with the Aquaflow Shimmer Pen, and I'm gonna do the same thing to splatter on stars, just with a little bit of shimmer here. And that creates a really fun look in the end. It's a little bit difficult to capture on camera, but it's completely stunning in real life, and it doesn't come off in your hands either. So after I'm done with that, I'm going to die cut it out using a circle layering die from Tonic. And again, just to kind of get rid of those little splatters on the outside and make it more clean. Now for the sentiment on this card, I'm using this awesome scripted sentiment die from Neat and Tangled. I've used this so many times, but I honestly love how it looks, and I love that it has a little shadow too. So I actually cut that shadow out of vellum, and I'm just using a little bit of liquid adhesive to adhere the awesome die cut right onto the vellum there. I'll make sure it's nice and centered before I really press anything down. It gives me a little bit of wiggle room too. And this vellum piece is actually going to just make it stand out a little bit more from the background that we created since it's a little bit busy. So I've added that right down onto the card, and then I'll add the You Are So from the same set. I heat embossed that onto a piece of black, and then I'm going to add this onto some foam tape and add it right onto the edge of my card. Now again, I wanted to really mention that I kept these cards super simple and plain. I wanted them to be really masculine looking, so avoiding any sequins or really embellished pieces. Um, but I really love how these looked, those clean and simple cards with some really stunning watercolor backgrounds on them, and those aqua flows are super fun to create these fun backgrounds. All right, so what'd you guys think? I hope you really enjoyed that video sharing how to use these aqua flow markers to create some really fun background techniques. Leave a comment down below letting me know which card was your favorite from today's video, and I would love to hear your comments and chat with you guys down there. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up, and be sure to click that subscribe button down below to never miss another crafting video like this one from me. I'll see you guys all very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye, guys.